Hello everyone and welcome back. So I'm going to do a Kerbal Space Program Run to the Moon for you guys. I'm just going to, uh, once you unlock the basic skill trees, the first little parts, I'm going to walk through how to uh, get to the moon on your first try and walk you through all the different steps and what it takes to get there. So first thing you're going to want to do is load up the VAB. Um, this is a new save for me, so I'm probably about to just, or it's sandbox, so everything should be unlocked for me. So I'm just going to go through and use the basic parts in the game. Um, there you go. One of these. We'll go ahead and add a, uh, fuel tank. Small fuel tank. And as long as we get over a certain amount of fuel, I'll show you how to do that here in a second. I'm going to add a small rocket. Preferably the swivel, because that's what we're going to be flying there with. Um, so that gives us 1200 or 1400 meters a second of Delta V just in this capsule alone. Put your basic lander legs on it. Um, we'll do just basic landing legs. Um, there they are. So just the basic landing strut, come down here to the bottom left hand corner and do the cycle through. So you get every, uh, so you get a perfect dynamic of like four or three you want to put these landing legs on um, so now what I'm going to do I, I probably should shroud that but it is what it is um, I'm actually gonna go in right here in the top right hand corner there's a move tool if you want to know how to unlock the cursor all you have to do is click down on the left stick for most game systems It'll unlock that for you. You unlock the move tool right there. You grab onto what you're trying to move, and then you just press. Um, yeah, so if you hold LB and move it, it moves a different direction than what it's doing here. And then if you un, uh, don't press the left bumper, then you can just move it accordingly. So. Because we're doing a moon landing if you hold lb or not lb the right bumper you can actually micro move it even further down um if you use the micro movements you can actually move it more than without it so i'm actually going to move it down to where i got a nice chunk of space to use it but it still looks like it's there okay and then you take it you retract these if I can reach them, there we go. You retract them. When you retract them, it looks like that. There you go, there's your lander pod. Uh, you're sitting at 3,900 meters a second, which is great because it's all you really need to get um, off the moon and back to Kerbin. Um, so there's that. Then you want to grab a parachute in the utility section. There should be a parachute for you. Let's grab a mark parachute. Um, honestly, I would grab this and separate it for just a second. That way you can put a heat shield in because you're going to need it. And then just put a smaller heat shield in just like that. Attach that back. Boom. Um, hold on. It's a coupler. Gonna need just a small decoupler, wherever it is. I think it's the TD12. Yeah, it's the TD12. You wanna make sure that those arrows are pointing up right there because what it does is it separates this way with the fuel instead of with the craft. All right, so that should be your lander pod for the moon, or for the moon, and uh, come in here, fix your staging. Uh, add a stage, drop that there. There you go, you still got 1200 meters a second of Delta V. I think it's like 700 to escape the moon and then like another 300 to get the trajectory down for it to uh, reach 
Kerbin. I'm not 100% certain on that. So just give me a second. Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw a throw a uh, some science on here just because so you want to throw your science on there I would do just a single one of each just like this single one of each just drop them on boom there you go there's certain science that you can't do on the mun but the other ones you can like that throw a goo container right here just like that perfect and put a uh, I think that's all I'm gonna put on there for right now yeah oh barometer I can put that on there that'd be fine I'm trying to keep it as high up on the cone, that way it doesn't interfere with the heat whenever you're coming down into the atmosphere. See how they're still hidden around the shroud? So like if you bring it straight up, it's hidden around the shroud, it'll be protected whenever it's coming down. Um, yeah, so that should be it for that. Um, make sure you put yourself a uh, small satellite or a bunch of satellites depending on um, how you're running. Uh, I'm actually gonna flip this. So that's facing upward. Just a little bit there. Perfect. And then I'm gonna throw a uh, probably smart to throw one of these on here yeah I'm slowly losing more and more of that Delta V as you can see but I'll have a lot of control whenever I'm in space so let me just go ahead and get a thing for electric solar panels I want the solar panels that do retract. These ones are the ones that don't retract. Okay, so what's this? So a three by two. We'll go ahead and drop that here. Perfect. Drop a battery on it. Where is my batteries? There they are. You probably only have like this small battery like this one. I'm gonna put two of them on here. And I'm gonna grab the move tool again and I'm gonna move them in just like that. All right, so that's pretty well set up as far as landing goes for the MUN. Um, wanna go ahead and move this staging. Make sure you get your staging right. It's over here in the corner. So rocket fires first, then the uh, decoupler, then the parachute, okay? That's for re-entry into Earth. Um, next thing I wanna do is uh, a module. By the time you get to this point to go to the MUN, you should have a decent amount of these unlocked. Um, or a basic amount of them unlocked, but just in case you don't, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I would do this. I'm gonna grab a, um, where is it? There we go, a decoupler. Take your decoupler, drop a decoupler here, okay? Uh, it doesn't really matter what decoupler, big or small, I'll just use the T12 because the T12, everyone has the T12 pretty much at the beginning. And then what I would do is I would add in a, um, add in the, where is it? Structural, grab myself the little girder segment, drop the girder segment, 
there. Grab yourself your fuel tanks. Add your small fuel tanks to it. See how it's doing that double? So change it to four. You'll have a lot of fuel and it's going to move pretty well. Um, so that, and we're going to grab four more of your swivels. 2300 meters a second, that's not bad. Um, let's see if I can get that even higher by removing some weight. So remove that. No, okay, so it was higher with this. Now the question that you gotta watch out for, or here's the thing that you gotta watch out for, guys. Um, click on that little thing there and look at the thrust to weight ratio. As long as you are above one, you're good. Um, you can actually get a lot of thrust off of that. That's a, that's a good amount. So now I'm gonna bring this up again. So that looks really good. Um, I'm gonna grab a strut. Everyone should have a basic strut, just like that. Just grab it and attach it. That way it all stays together. Um, I'm actually going to add a cone to the top because air resistance is really bad. There you go. Um, and then we're gonna go in and I actually think I'm gonna add a center one here. Um, Oh God, there we go. There it is. Add a center right there. How much more fuel did, how much more did that give me? Let's see. One ninety one thrust. It didn't give me a whole lot extra Delta V. So that kind of stinks. Um, it's a lot of Delta V. Okay. Um, so that's that. Let's try something just out of curiosity. Um, let's go ahead and bring this to a separate segment right here. Just like that. Let's go ahead and add in a segment just like that. Let's go ahead and grab this off. Let's go ahead and drop this off. Just to change it real quick. We're going to go in and add in one of these extra fuel tanks. Let's just see how much of a burn that is. That is a decent burn right there off of one. Okay, so we'll go ahead and add in a um, decoupler, just a basic decoupler right in the middle. Drop this back on here. There we go. All right. So now, this should sit right around 4,500, oh my goodness, there we go. Should be right around 4,500 meters a second, which is great. I got a glitch going on right now. I'm still above one thrust to weight ratio, so that's good. Um, and then if you want to, you can just add a booster to it or a couple of boosters. Everyone always makes fun of the boosters, but you can always add a booster to it or two. Um, and I'm going to do that just to make sure that I get into orbit. So I'm going to add a small booster like that. 
to it right here. Probably just going to drop that right there. Uh, where is it? Engines. Small booster. Boom. That little extra 300 meters a second makes a huge difference. So. Yes, it does. There it is. Okay. So. There we go. Makes a huge difference. Um, whenever it comes to this type of stuff, I'm actually going to go in and just move it tool this by stuff is making a mistake right now. My calculator is making a mistake right now. So we're just going to go ahead and go in and extend this out a little bit there. Oh God, I'm making mistakes. Oh God, made mistakes. I didn't mean to do the move a tool on that. There we go. All right. So this should be able to get us to the moon. Um, rename craft first one launch. Okay, there we go. Save the craft. Put Jebediah in it. And there he is. And launch. So now I'm going to go over here into the bottom left hand corner, click that out so I can see my thrust to weight ratio. I'm going to check everything to make sure all the staging is correct, which it is. And now I'm just going to go ahead and launch. Uh, three, two, one. Make sure that you press B to turn on your SAS. That's going to help you out whenever you're launching. And we are a go. There we go. I can bring this down. You want to keep it around one point. 1 and 1.2 thrust to weight ratio because what that does is it it keeps the most efficient fuel aspect that you have in the game uh, I slowly start to lean over at about 2,000 feet or, or 2,000 meters or about 100 meters a second or 60 meters a second depending on the craft and Jebediah is off with honestly a lot of fuel to spare it seems like as you notice the higher I get the more the fuel climbs on the other stages because I'm getting less and less uh, altitude which is or less and less aero resistance which is great so the higher I get the more I could turn down this engine burn by holding LB and pressing up or down on the d-pad um, you hit both the bumpers at the same time you can go to this map and check it out 
just to see where you're at. If you right click down on the right stick, you can go over top of the stuff and hold X to open it up so you can see how high you're getting and how high your apoapsis is. So I normally like to just slowly start leaning myself over. At about 20,000 meters, I should be right around 50 to 60 degrees on the nav ball. Just keep on floating. I've still got a thousand meters of a second of delta V. Slowly getting more and more as it goes. Should cruise right on up to uh, to about thirteen or fourteen thousand meters a second. It takes about twenty two to twenty three thousand meters or twenty two to twenty twenty three hundred meters a second in order to maintain a stable orbit at about seventy thousand meters. And this is just a brand new career save. That's all I did was load up a brand new career save. So at about 30,000 meters, you can tell I'm right around 35 degrees on the nav ball. You want to keep the maintaining that fuel efficiency because the more efficient you are with fuel, the better off you'll be. Give it around 1.1 to 1.2. Um, if you click down here in the bottom right hand corner to the maneuver node, it'll show you where you're at as far as your apoapsis goes. And I'll be coasting smoothly on up to 70,000 meters. And I should be hitting a nice clean apoapsis and periapsis. Beautiful gentle burn. I'm at 25 degrees at 40,000 meters. Should just keep on climbing.
I'm pitching up a little bit because as you guys can see, I'm burning a little extra fuel and I'm a little low, so I wanna make sure that I get up a little bit higher. So I brought it back up to 45, uh, right around 40 degrees. I am almost to an orbital speed, so should coast cleanly right up to it. We've got a slight issue though, I don't think I packed enough fuel. <laughs> okay, here we go. Now I should be able just to cleanly coast all the way around. I don't think I packed enough fuel for this. I can get into an orbit of the moon, but I don't think I'll be able to land on it. And get back. I did a little bit of inefficient burning there. So we will see though. I might be able to. Go ahead and fast forward. Still fast forward. We'll hit the height of the periapsis or the apoapsis right about now. Go ahead and lean this sucker all the way over to zero degrees and just do a quick burn. I'm going to go ahead and turn this all the way down so I'm not wasting a bunch of burning to circularize better. should be good enough all right so now here's where the tricky part comes in uh, so whenever you back into this menu by double clicking both bumpers at the same time you can see where the mun is you want to hit 90 degrees off of the mun's maneuver or right around where the mun's at click on that get a maneuver node started right bumper switches between everything and then left bumper allows you to or left or left thumbstick up on the left thumbstick will allow you to get to. So what I want to do is I want to actually set my camera over to the MUN. I want to actually set myself over to the MUN. And so long as the focus is going on it, I can click back into this maneuver node over here. Oop, nope, nope. I want the maneuver node. There we go. All right, so right bumper. You can slowly adjust it to bring yourself in. I do want to land on this side of the month, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that right there. Just perfectly like that. Oh, God. Come on. You got to be real just slow on the stick in order to get it there. That should be right about 5,000 meters. Uh, no, it's not. Dang it. That's close enough. All right. Because I will have to start retro burning right about here to get it to slowly bring itself in. And then I'll have to retrograde as soon as I hit the ground. So that burn is gonna cost me 870 meters a sec or 837 meters a second, which is very, very low, by the way. I should have about 10,000 meters once I enter the moon's sphere of influence. And then from there, it'll be a very interesting day. All right, uh, so let me go ahead and go on here to my craft. I want to because I didn't set any quick connects for this. I want to click on this real quick and extend the solar panel. And then I want to extend this and hopefully it will reach without me. Um, 
Hopefully it'll reach all the way to the MUN without me having to worry about losing data or losing um, transmission with the Earth. Hopefully. Should work. So I got 26 minutes until I am in alignment and ready to go. So I will, I'm actually gonna rotate this so I can actually get the most solar energy right now. Just like that. Boom, perfect. So now, once I go around, dark side, and we're almost there. T minus 10 minutes. Once I get to about a minute out, I'm going to adjust. I'll start slowing myself down. I'm getting close to a minute out. Cut this off. It's going to take 25 seconds to burn it. So we're going to go ahead and go to the node here at because I have a stage that I'm gonna have to deal with, I'm gonna go ahead and start burning at about negative 20 to negative 30 seconds because you have to split that burn time in a half in order to hit the perfect burn. But while that's happening, I'm gonna sit here on the moon just like this and make sure that my stuff starts lining up. Actually, I don't have to do that yet. Burn. Burn, baby, burn. Disco Inferno. Okay. Stage. Second part. Cut over to here. Bring it down a lot bring down the speed that the craft's coming in, that way I can hit it perfectly. And 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and done. Done. All right. What the heck? Okay, we're getting there. I don't know what's going on with that. Let me cancel out that maneuver node real quick. There we go. I got even closer. Haha, <laughs> perfect. All right, so. Beautiful. I'm just gonna point it at the sun. Actually, you point it this way, that way it's pointing at the sun better okay let's go ahead and just go in here real quick and save as a quick save done because if i mess this up i really don't want to have to restart this video all right uh so here we are and that's where we're going to the back side of the moon sphere of influence should be just about there there we are some on sphere of influence there 
All right, we're coming in for a landing. I'm gonna set this to retrograde. If you don't have that, then what you wanna do is just keep your little arrow over the circle with the X. Oops. I am not gonna be able to get off the MUN because I did not pack enough fuel. And it doesn't look like I'm gonna be able to survive this either, which is gonna suck. It's getting pretty close. thousand meters a second that's pretty close all right you just go ahead and save real quick edit just in case I'm at the wrong timing quick save to enter save go ahead and set that to terrain and take a guess at how many tries it's going to take me to land. <laughs> Legs out. Four thousand meters. Oh God. So what I need to do, or what I needed to do was pack an extra landing bit and I, you just need a little bit more fuel. So this is how you get to the moon right here. Not that you're going to be able to get back, but burn yourself a little bit just like that just burn a little bit at a time so you can bring it down for a safe landing it's barely any fuel just like that just like that look at that beautiful There you go and that's how you land that was perfect little bunny hop and then it's good and uh, so there you go now unfortunately I don't have a way to get back so this is how you get to the Mun and that's how you land on the Mun and uh, I just accidentally just killed my Kerbal just now I think hold on whoops <laughs> Oh, I pressed the wrong button. Funny. Oops. It was a mistake. Let's see if I can land a second time with the amount of fuel I have. Thanks.
toe. Uh, please don't break. Oh, snap. I did manage to get to land twice. Now I really don't have any, any enough fuel. Whoops. <laughs> that was a mistake. Now this is what I meant to do. There you go. Perfect. Anyway, guys, so that's how you get to the mun. And now he's stranded, so I'm going to have to figure out a way to pick him up. Probably use bigger stuff, though, because the mun with bigger items is super easy to get to. But I was just trying to do with the basic items. There you go. That's how you get to the mun. I don't have a way for you to get back in this video.